Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will see how to use Fetch API to get data from an API using JavaScript. You can also use this code in a Blogger post, but first we will write the code in VS Code because the code editor in Blogger is not that good. And then we will add the code to our Blogger website. So let's get started. All right, so here I have a basic HTML file and I have this uh, basic HTML5 boilerplate code. And let's create a script tag over here and we'll write all the JavaScript inside this. And I'll also open the console over here in the browser. So I'll just go to inspect and click over here in console. All right, so here we have the console and if we just type console.log and hi, we can see that it is displayed over here. So let's delete this and let's start with our fetch API. Now the only thing that the fetch API needs is a URL. So let's use a placeholder API called JSON placeholder. So just search for JSON placeholder in Google and you'll find this website. And we'll just go to this website over here. And here we can see it provides free fake API for testing and prototyping. And let's scroll down and get the link of the API. So here we can see we have the resources. And if we go to this link, we will have 100 posts and uh, then we have comments and all these things over here let's get 10 users from here so i'll just right click over here and click on copy link address and let's create a variable over here in javascript so let's type let url and i'll just paste the url over here so this is our url and we're going to use this in our fetch api so let's type fetch and here in parenthesis, you have to type the URL. So we have already created this variable URL. So I'll just type that over here. All right now, the next thing you have to type is dot then. And we can use dot then over here because fetch is promise based. And I'll show you what this means in just a minute. But before that, let's go ahead and write the syntax. So here we can type dot then. Now here you can create a function. So I'll just create an arrow function over here. And for the argument, I'll just type res for response. You can type any name over here. And let's create an arrow function and we have to return the JSON data from this. So for that, let's type return and uh, let's type res dot JSON. Now, since we are getting JSON data from here, we can just add dot JSON over here. If you are getting text data, you can just type dot text. Now, once you return this JSON data, you have to type dot then and here you can use the data. So let's create an arrow function and I'll just name the argument data. You can name this anything you want and let's create an arrow function and I'll just display the data in the console. So I'll just type console dot log and data and let's go back to our web page and here we can see we have the JSON data and we have 10 items over here and uh, and we can see they are all the data of the users. Now if you want to get the first data from here you can just type data and in square brackets you can just type zero and here we get the first data and if you want to get the name you can just type data zero dot name and we get the first name over here. So that's how easy it is to get data from an API using the fetch API. Now let me show you how the promise works and how this dot then helps us in this process. So here if you just add a console.log and I'll just type console.log and I'll just type fetch started. And here we can see fetch started and then we have the data over here. But if we go outside the fetch and after the fetch, if you just type console.log and if you just type fetch ended, we can see that it says fetch started and then we have fetch ended and then we have the data from the fetch. Now the reason for that is that when you use this dot, then it starts the process and it just keeps running in the background. And then we just move on to the next line in our JavaScript. So the next line is this right here. So let's add some console.log over here as well so that we can see how it works. So I'll just type console.log res started. And now you can see we have fetch started over here and then we have fetch ended because this keeps running in the background. And once it receives the data, it runs these lines of code. So here we can see res started is displayed over here and then we have the data displayed. So this is how the fetch API works. Now you can just experiment with different APIs and you can just get the link of the API and add it over here and then just get the data and use it however you need. Now we'll just add this code to our blogger website and uh, let's see whether it works. So let's copy this script tag from here. Now here I'm in my blogger dashboard. Let's go ahead and create a new post. So let's click on new post and I'll just name this API. 
and first of all you have to make sure that you are in the HTML view so if you're in the compose view over here you can just click on this button and go to the HTML view and uh, let's paste the script over here and uh, let's click on publish confirm and let's just open this and we'll just open the console and we'll see whether the data is being displayed and here you can see in the console we have the data which is the name being displayed over here so the fetch api works all right in a blogger website as well let's just add another link over here from json placeholder so i'll just go over here and let's get the post from here so i'll just right click over here and copy link let's go to the post and i'll just replace this link with the, the link of the post and i'll just remove all these console logs from here now since we are fetching the posts we may not have name over here so i'll just delete this from here we'll just display all the posts so i'll just click on update and let's refresh this page and let's open the console and here we can see we have 100 items in our array let's just open this and these are all the posts that we fetched from the api if you want to get just the title you can just go ahead and uh, type data and uh, here you can type the index number so i'll just type zero for the first item and uh, it is called title so we can just type title over here and if i just update and if i refresh this we can see that the first title is being displayed over here so that's how you can use fetch api to fetch data from an api using javascript in a blogger website now in the next video we will use a different api and we will display all the data inside a web page so we'll just add some html elements and display the data in the html elements so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day